What is your name? Date of birth? Where are you from? My name is Konstantin Leonidovich Korovkin. I was born on October 10, 1984 year in the city of Krasny Liman, Donetsk region. Was Krasny Liman occupied? Yes. What period? Between the 25th day of May, 2022 year, and the 28th day of September, 2022 year. Were you there at the time? Yes. Did you collaborate with the occupiers? No. Do you voluntarily consent to the recording and publication of this video? Yes. In such a case, tell us what you were convicted for, under what article and for how many years. I was convicted for correspondence on the internet, in the social network, Odnoklasniki. I was approached by a man with a picture of a military man. I did not pay attention to what kind of military man was there. He wrote that he was a former resident of Krasny Lehman, introduced himself and asked how things were going in the town. I wrote to him that I am a military man. I have military men living in my dacha. And it so happened that I named four places where the military lived and I was penalized for it by being told that it was a surrender. Was it clear where to aim using your coordinates? This is only understood by the locals. It's about those who understand. Nothing more to say on the subject? No. Were your coordinates shot at? No. Criminal record? 14 years. I see. Do you have an accomplice? No. Are you alone? Yeah. There are other people in the prison on my floor who are also contacted by this man. I see. Because of this man, three residents of Krasny Lehman went to prison, and the name of this military man was mentioned in their court case. Mm-hmm. Did you realize the consequences of sending coordinates? No, I didn't even think I was giving coordinates. I was just describing the situation in the city. Have you pleaded guilty? Yes. Did you have your property confiscated? No. Did this man pay you? No. Were you just chatting? Yes, we were just talking. Do you want to trade? Yes, I do. My mother, wife and seven-year-old daughter stayed at home in Krasny Lehman. Do you have relatives in Moscow? My uncle, aunt and grandmother. Can I see your verdict? Your cell phone was seized, you pleaded guilty. Yes. I see. Anyway, you have a lot of relatives in Moscow, and you sympathize with Russia, right? I don't mind. I was born in Ukraine, I love Ukraine. When my city was seized, I saw what was happening there. What? Everything was mined when Ukraine retreated. Who did this? We couldn't even get out of the basement. The Ukrainians said when they entered the territory, it's not us, it's right sector. Nonsense. Right sector was in 2014. On May 24, 25, the army of Ukraine in the town of Krasny Lehman. For two days they laid mines. They mined the roads, the access roads. They were doing the right thing. There were 6,000 people there. Why didn't you come out of there? We couldn't get out of there. They wouldn't let anyone out of town. And on the day they left, the bridge was blown up and the mayor of the city announced that there were no people in the city. And the city was left empty. The mayor's last name? Zuravlev. He's out of town? He left town. When the mayor left, he announced on TV that there were no people in town, everyone had left. What did the Russian troops do? They came, demoned the roads and settled there. They had a few roadblocks, but they did not bother the people. They had no complaints about us. They were just checking IDs. 
They didn't bring people down into basements, check cell phones? What do you mean? When Russia occupies territory, people go down into basements. We've been there before. Did you stay there? Yes, we lived in the basements. We had our own little dwelling there. Because all our houses were shot up. Three shells hit the roof of my house, not to mention the shell holes in the basement. And the house across the street is half destroyed. If Russia hadn't started then, would there have been a war? If everything was by mutual agreement, by treaty, there would be no war. Under what contract? I don't know what the treaty is. There was a referendum. When there was a referendum, there was no occupation by Russia. It was. We had some people in town saying it was an election. In 2022? In 2014. Was there an occupation then? There was no occupation. How do you know? We had a referendum in our town. What were the results of the referendum? 90% of the people voted. For what? I don't know. There were elections in Donetsk region. An election for the DNR? No, that's not it. I don't remember verbatim what was said in the election. Separation from Ukraine? Autonomy? Yes. Were you at this referendum? What? Were you there? I wasn't at the referendum. Why does everyone talk confidently about 90%, but no one has been there? I saw the crowds that came to the polls. These crowds could have voted for Ukraine. There were two options on this ballot, to leave the party or not to leave the party. No further options were provided. Yes, there was no DNR option. For the independence of the Donetsk People's Republic, yes, that's what the DNR is. That's what it's called. About your exchange, I, Korovkin Konstantin Leonidovich, was born on October 10, 1984th year in the city of Krasny Lehman, Donetsk region. I was convicted under Article 111, Paragraph 1, Section 7, Treason. Surrender of four positions, please pick me up for exchange to the Russian Federation. I hope you'll trade me. Would you agree to a recording of this conversation? Yes. What is your name? Where and when were you born? I am Vladimir Georgievich Nazarov, from Dnepropetrovsk. May 31, 1972. What are you accused of? I am charged under Article 346, Part 2, Part 3, Spreading Russian Aggression on Facebook. Support? Support. Distribution same thing. And that's true? On Facebook, I've posted five or six times. I didn't make any comment. I posted this to read what people think about it, what they are saying about this war. What is the content of your publications? For example, the content was dedicated to prisoners of war. Can I see it? Yeah. It's about prisoners of war. I wanted people to know about POWs. Maybe someone will see their relatives there, father, mother, sister, brother, and realize that they are not missing, but are in captivity. And four more posts by an American blogger on Russia Today. I posted this as well. I was sentenced to five years for those five publications. Aha! Uh -huh. You write here about the victory of the Russian Federation. According to you, the enemy is Ukraine. You write about the Russian military. Your position is interesting. You also praise the Russian military. The claim is that they are doing the right thing and Ukraine is wrong about everything. You are already making your point. Ukraine lost this war, is someone's quote. Yeah. So you reposted someone else's quote. 
I got it. Have you admitted your guilt? Yes, I pleaded guilty. A deadline? Five-year sentence. Five years, you pleaded guilty. What's your motive? Motive? I had one motive, and it was that I have a negative attitude toward glorification. Including Stepan Bandera. If we call Bandera a hero, are we allowed to fire missiles at us? Of course not. I think that neither Ukraine nor Russia needs this war. If someone had told me 15 years ago that we would be at war with Russia, I certainly would not have believed it. I get the impression that Ukraine and Russia were just pushed together by other countries. And it's favorable to other countries. To who? It's a complicated question. Can we assume that you've just been believing this myth all along? A myth? Yes, I, like many other people, believed in this thing. Yes. Why? I don't know where this war started, if that's what we're talking about. There was Maidan, and a lot of people died on Maidan, both on the part of the police and the protesters. How much approximately? Over 300 people. All right. And it all started with someone disagreeing with someone else, someone who was the first to engage in conflict. In the country? I don't understand. In the center of any country, there are often moments when someone agrees with something and someone disagrees with something. But what does this have to do with Russia? What exactly gives Russia the right to invade us if we have someone who disagrees with something? Of course, no one has the right to intervene unless, say, the other side has asked for help. All right. I don't know if Russia has been approached for help. This war has to end, no one needs it. Well, let's say 5% asked for it, but what about the other 95% who didn't? Maybe there should have been some way to resolve these issues through negotiation rather than war? Maybe Russia should have just stayed away from us since 2014? And then we'd be on our own like we used to be. Why did you exalt Russia so much? Maybe because I was still born in the Soviet Union. Got it. I got used to the fact that in the Soviet Union we were all fraternal peoples. Yes. And I really didn't want a war. I get it. It was already a war, and you were already spreading all this stuff during the war. Things that elevate Russia. Take a look at this. Fraternal nations. I don't consider them brotherly, but according to you AR. When one of the supposedly brotherly nations, Russia, invades. They are destroying another brotherly nation, Ukraine, and you start supporting Russian troops with your posts. Why? It's difficult for me to answer. Here I mostly didn't so much support Russian aggression as I wanted to read, wanted to know what other people thought about it. Then why didn't you repost someone else's post about Russia losing the war, but reposted a post about Ukraine having already effectively lost it? A lot of it I just haven't published. There was no point in writing because many had already expressed their opinion. What have you been doing? I have worked as an electrician in schools, daycare centers, and hospitals. Are you an electrician? Yes. Fourth grade. I got it. I traveled to schools and hospitals all over Ukraine. Have you seen the Nazis? No. I haven't. You seem to be a proponent of free speech. Yes. You are an advocate of freedom of opinion, aren't you? And here some are in favor of Bandera and others, like you, are against it for their own reasons. What's the problem? When you were traveling on business trips, earning money, did that cause you serious problems? No hardship. Do it again. It didn't cause me any problems. I did my job for both children and people. 
I can't understand what the problem is with Stepan Bandera. I just don't like that for some reason he's being called a hero here. Some people hold this opinion and some hold the opposite. So what's the problem? What's the problem? I don't see the problem here. I want to understand the main thing, the most important thing. You started supporting the Russian army, which invaded and started killing Ukrainians. Why? I want to say that no one wants this war. Nobody wants this. And explain why, holding that opinion, you support Russia. Well, I supported not only Russia, I supported our Ukrainians as well, because I feel sorry for the guys who go to the front and die there. Supported? I don't want NATO here. And I don't want. Oh my God. Is it because you don't want NATO here that you supported Russia killing Ukrainians? Not only that. What else? You said Bandera and NATO. Did you know that we're not going to join NATO? Yes. What does this have to do with NATO? Then why join NATO? Because we were attacked by Russia. In Crimea and in Donbass, and we realize that they may not stop. And we say, let's join NATO so that we can defend ourselves, because our forces will not be enough against such a huge country. What else is unclear here? What else? Nothing else. And if you knew how it would end for you, would you have written what you wrote on Facebook? I can't answer that question either. Knowing the risk of imprisonment, would you do this? I would make an effort to end this war. To end the war. I can't understand how your posts were supposed to end the war? Maybe because a lot of people will see how much grief has already happened. We need to end this and come to the negotiating table. Did you know that the United Nations has offered Russia 11 times to introduce peacekeepers into Donbass, and all 11 times Russia has refused? I don't know about that. Did you know that since 2014, we have been at the negotiating table continuously? There were various negotiations, online, face-to-face -face meetings, face-to-face -face meetings with representatives of Germany and France, the trilateral contact group, the Normandy format, the Minsk agreements. We were constantly at the negotiating table. Then Russia invades, starts bombing us with missiles, destroying us, actually carrying out genocide of the people, and every collaborator says, I wanted us to finally sit down at the negotiating table. That's our point of view. Do you understand what they want? I don't think they want to go to war. Many people. Can you just give us the answer to the question of what they want us to do? No, I don't know what they want, I didn't ask. So, according to your logic, Ukraine should simply become part of Russia, right? I'm not talking about joining. And what to do next? Look, Kherson, Zaporizhia, Donetsk, Luhansk regions. And we are left with Dnepropetrovsk region, Kharkiv region. But there are places from where they can launch NATO missiles at Russia. So they need to occupy Kharkiv and Dnepropetrovsk oblasts? Then central Ukraine is next on the map. Therefore, they need to take the Zhytomyr region, then the Kyiv region, then Vinnytsia, Kamelnytsky regions. And the western part, that is, they must take everything, because in any case, we will place NATO missiles on our territory, and they will reach Russia very quickly. That's how it works. Where is the solution to this situation? Explain this to me. Nobody was going to take us into NATO. Russia comes in and kills people, destroys entire cities by simply wiping them off the face of the earth, takes over four regions and Crimea. I ask you a simple question. Can you imagine that it was their goal to take over these territories? I don't think they had that goal in mind. I don't think that's true. 
Their goal was to have no NATO in these areas, right? They didn't want to take the areas, but they had to. You often say that you have not met Nazis. Yeah. But there are too many videos of guys waving Nazi flags and Nazi symbols. Yes, and in Russia too. But in Russia they are responsible for it, but here they are not. Which one? And we cancelled the holiday on the 9th of May and made the holiday on the 8th of May. What worries you about this? For example, it bothers me that my ancestors fought. Did you know that it was cancelled after the full-scale Russian invasion? Before this, it was a public holiday. It's true. Why do you say it was cancelled? First Russia invaded, and then they cancelled it, this cannot be taken as an argument. Certainly. Well. Monuments were toppled even before Russia invaded. Which of these fallen monuments is so dear to you? Lenin? And here is Lenin. Who? Other monuments. Which? Who is your favorite? Zhukov? Even Zhukov. Why do you like Zhukov so much that you support missile strikes on Ukrainian children? When I ask you the question, why did Russia invade? You say, I don't know. They took areas because of monuments, Bandera, land, NATO. No. Before they took these areas, Ukrainian children died from their shells, rockets, bombs, and small arms artillery attacks. They were dying. Do you understand? So you support this. You support killing children. I did not support when in 2014 they sent to bomb Donetsk and Donbass, also unarmed people. Are you talking about Strelkov now? Are you talking about Strelkov now? No, I mean that in 1914 our government sent people there to bomb. No. How not, if planes flew and bombed? Yes. Didn't the Russians fly? Who did they bomb there? Of people. Explain what the Russian Gherkin did with his group in Slaviansk in 2014. Did they save someone? Maybe. If they lived normally there and continued to live, not counting the Russian shelling, then who did he save then? They saved 500 children. What 500 children? That they died there. Where? In Donetsk, Lugansk. So why did they die? Why did they die? Do you believe that Ukraine itself began to bomb, for no reason? Yes. With no reason? With no reason. No reason. Because those people did not want to see Poroshenko in power. They didn't want Poroshenko. Then it could be resolved. How many people left there? Don't know. Inquire then. Was there Russian technology there? Were there Russian volunteers there? Where? In Donbass. Then? Yes. Perhaps, but I didn't ask. What were they doing there? Perhaps they weren't there. What was Gherkin Strokov doing there? What if they weren't there? Don't know. You know what I mean. Yes, I understand. This is well known. I can show you a lot of videos now. I've already seen all these videos. If you know this, why do you say, I don't know? You have supported Russia since 2014, in fact. Because you think that the Crimeans themselves wanted to go to Russia, you didn't see the people who had to leave Donbass because of the Russian occupation, because of the Russian invasion, because of all those demon-possessed Cossacks who were doing all this there. You don't see this, you don't want to notice Gherkin and Motorola either, and you don't notice that it was all completely controlled from Russia. But you saw the helicopters and airplanes that flew to Donetsk and Luhansk just to bomb the cities.
That's why you're here. What if Russia does not take you? To be honest, they are very reluctant to take people away, even with the fact that we are trying to record and publish the video. Russia will not take you away. How will you live next? You will serve your sentence, you will be 56 years old, you will be released. What's next? Bandera remains, NATO remains, lands are still being sold left and right. Although the land is not for sale and Bandera is long dead. But we could really join NATO by then. What then, how will you live? You do not know? How's that? I think long term, roughly speaking. They didn't exchange you. How to deal with people like you? You are potentially dangerous. I can be exchanged. We want to exchange you, even today. But let's say they don't want to take you, they don't need you. So they came, as it were, to protect people like you. But they don't want to take you, they don't need you. You will be released in five years, what next? I don't know. I'm not a seer. And what do you think? None of us knows what will happen in five years. What would they do in Russia with a traitor? We would exchange it. It didn't work out, he served his time and was released. Traitor. Shot? For what? But as? They are not that bloodthirsty. Do you consider yourself a traitor to your homeland? No. Do you consider Ukraine your homeland? Yes. Did you support Russian aggression? Yes. Do you consider yourself a traitor? No. Why? I don't see myself being a traitor. Look, one neighboring country, Russia, is invading Ukraine, which is your homeland, according to you. Russia begins to shell cities and kill people, and you support the Russian army. Are you betraying your homeland by this? I know that the events of 2014 could have been resolved without war. And without those events? It all started in 2014. This war began that year. That's right. I agree with you. The war began in 2014. Russia took Crimea. Is this normal? Only without the theses that those people wanted it that way, you weren't there, Russia took Crimea. I won't answer this question, okay? They took down Ukrainian flags and hung Russian rags. To you, as a patriot, as a person whose homeland was Ukraine, did this not seem strange, bad, negative? Any flag that is trampled on is a negative action. And what did you write about this? Where did you express your indignation? You said that Russia shouldn't do this? Russian flags were also trampled, so I was not indignant. This is the same example as the Polish one. Ukraine is your flag, this is your country. You should be concerned about the flag of your country so that it is not removed or torn down here. Right. Why are you giving me the Russian flag as a counter-argument? This betrayal of yours began in 2014, just like the war. You know what? What? You are a completely Russian person mentally. Maybe because I was born during Soviet times, it was different there. Haven't you noticed how the Soviet Union disappeared? I noticed, I noticed very much. I had to leave the factory. I noticed a lot of things. Yeah. Then I heard what a homeless person is. So. Although in Soviet times this never happened. A person could not live on the street. At that time it was not the case that grandparents walked through garbage cans and looked for food. Vladimir, I'm not even going to try to refute your Soviet dreams, dreams about the Soviet. We are now talking about Russia, 
which invaded and started killing Ukrainians. We are not talking about the Soviet Union, because there are homeless people in Russia too. Certainly. And this argument cannot justify Russian aggression. No. That's why I don't want to talk about the Soviet Union. Do you want to remember how good it was there? You have enough time for this. I ask why you are pro-Russian, not pro-Soviet, but precisely a pro-Russian person, because Russia is not the Soviet Union. Successor or not. In Russia there is no economic, political or any other situation that existed in the Soviet Union. This has not been preserved. There are also homeless people there. There are also people who climb through garbage cans. There are also oligarchs. There is also practically no middle class. But there are very rich and very poor people. I know. There is nothing there that was in the Soviet Union, as it were. So why are you a pro-Russian person? I don't know. Maybe because my ancestors are from Russia. Ancestors? Maybe. Maybe. But in general. I say again, in this sense you are not exclusive. Unfortunately, in Russia there are also many such people for whom everything seems to be in a fog. And why? Hard to say. And it's hard for me. And people are dying. That's it. I will ask you to write down a short appeal to the Russian side. I, Nazarov Vladimir Georgievich, born 1972, May 31st. Article 346, Parts 2 and 3. What's this? The spread of Russian aggression. Support? And support. Do you want to exchange? Please exchange me.